welcome back to Shrink Wrap Hawaii. I'm here with my guest, Nancy Seiden, again, the clinical psychologist. And we're going to turn now to talk about international psychology. How did you get into such a thing? Well, it, it's something that I've always been very interested in people throughout the world and different cultures. Um, and I, there was an organization excuse me, there's a division within the American Psychological Association, Division 52, that is on international psychology. And we're actually celebrating our 20th year anniversary this year. But I joined that division. And within that division, I really found fascinating people that were really interested in taking psychology way beyond just how we look at it here in the United States and looking at what other psychologists are doing in different parts of the world and really exchanging information and collaborating and doing scholarly work together. And in that division, I actually talked about my frustration that psychology was really not involved in human trafficking at all. And that division gave me the support to go ahead and start a task force on human trafficking. And we did. I established that in the, the late 2000s. And from that task force, it became clear that the whole association needed to be involved in human trafficking and looking at how psychologists can address the issue. So there became a system-wide task force um, that I had the privilege of co-chairing. And I shared with you the executive summary. If anybody wants to read the report that was published in 2014, you can go to the American Psychological Association webpage. And it's uh, a very rich and dense report talking about human trafficking and specifically you know what are the consequences for those that are trafficked and what role psychologists and I believe other mental health professionals can take to help fight um, this really horrible thing that's happening massively in this world I mean we've, we've been trying to get rid of slavery for years we've had laws uh, the UN had a declaration in 1948 we we know that there are more people living as slaves now than any other time in our life. Including before the Civil War. Yes, definitely. That's horrendous. Mm -hmm. That's really astounding. Yeah. While we don't have hard facts, because it's really hard to get hard facts. Right, because nobody's going to say, oh, I'm a slave. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. But estimates are up to 31,000 people are trafficked. Excuse me, 31 million people trafficked a year. In the world. In the world. Wow. Um, and here in the United States, we know that there's not one state or one territory that has not had trafficking cases identified. So it's, you know, it's prevalent throughout the United States. It's prevalent throughout the world. So you mentioned how you, know, you thought it was important for psychologists internationally mm -hmm. to be involved. Why, why is that so important? I mean, what can psychologists do? A psychologist can really um, do multiple different things. I mean, from education, just raising awareness, to um, going into elementary schools and junior highs and teaching kids what to be aware of. I mean, there's in the United States, one of the recruitment ways is what's called grooming. And quite literally, it's somebody that identifies a vulnerable girl or boy mm -hmm. and starts attending to that, somebody that maybe doesn't have good self-esteem and telling them, oh, how beautiful you are, how wonderful. Mm -hmm. And they literally, you know, entice them in by the things that they're not getting in other parts of their life or the right. vulnerable parts, and then ultimately get them most, most oftenly uh, in the sex trade. Um, so that's one thing that psychologists can do. The other thing is, you know, with people that have become victims of human trafficking, and when they're on the, the side of getting out of that, working with them because many, many people are quite damaged by their experience of being trafficked, um, both physically and mentally. Yeah, I would imagine just like with uh, any kind of abuse, yeah. one of the problems is the people begin to blame themselves, to have guilt and think, oh, I must have done something. Well, right. we have, you know, we're, most of us are raised on Good things happen to good people. Bad things happen to bad people. Yeah. And that kind of that and belief so if system. this bad thing happened, it must be my fault. Or, yeah. I mean, that can definitely be a component of it, for sure. Uh, and, and then the other piece is trust. You know, you, you've trusted somebody. And the major way people are trafficked are what's called false fronts, where they're 
given the opportunity, if, if you take this job, I can get you to the United States and you can be uh, and work in a restaurant and make money. Uh -huh. And they do that. They come in with this idea that they're going to have this job and all of a sudden they get where they're supposed to go and it's no longer the job that they, are, they thought they agreed to. Again, they'll be exploited, whether it's sexually or labor-wise. Um, so, you know, here's somebody you trusted or a, you trusted a parent and they sold you to be trafficked. So yeah, there's, that, people must have a hard time yeah. believing it even that a, a parent would sell their kid to the sex trade. Mm -hmm. But it happens. It happens. I think there's some people that do it very knowingly because mm -hmm. they have their own problems, uh, whether they be drug addicted and this is a way they can support their drug habit or they're from a very impoverished family, and they, again, the false front, well, we have an opportunity for your daughter, she'll be able to send money home, and they willingly do it with the great hope of the good life for their daughter, and that their life might be a little bit better if they have monies coming in, but it doesn't happen. So what, are, what has the APA, American Psychological mm -hmm. Association, been doing to support your efforts? Um, well, I think, first of all, supporting the task force. Mm -hmm. and, uh, creating a, a document that can be used by policymakers. That's another thing that we, we are a resource for many other venues. Uh -huh. um, and as well as there's resolutions that have just recently be, been passed of working um, with people that have been victimized and psycho psychologists have that guide to assist them. Uh -huh. so, they, so you mean in a political arena, uh, the APA can reach out and try to sponsor legislation? Do we do that? No, but we, no. Can, we can surely offer information. Uh-huh. So that so politicians can, could. Right. So it can really affect policy in an uh -huh. effective way. Are there places in the world that have been um, better than others in doing that? Absolutely. Um, the U.S. does a report called Trafficking in Persons Report every year, and they literally grade countries and their efforts of combating human trafficking. Uh -huh. And that's done annually. And you know, your tier one country is a better country. Tier three is not. You know, they're not doing stuff. So yeah, there's definitely countries that are identified are doing a better job fighting trafficking and committed to trying to eradicate something that's very difficult to do since it's so lucrative and so underground. Right. So it's similar, I guess, to some of the drug trade because it's lucrative and there's a, mm -hmm. a supply and a demand. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. In fact, um, human trafficking is just under drugs as far as what's trafficked and... In terms of money? Mo in, in terms of money. Wow. Yeah. And there's a study that was done out of Chicago, um, 25 pimps that were, had trafficked women in the sex trade. They were all talking about they used to be in the drug trade, but it was much safer to be... <laughs> doing human trafficking. You won't get shot. <laughs> you won't get shot, less likely to get arrested, wow. and there, it's, it's a challenge. Well, thank you, Nancy. Our time is just about up, and I really appreciate you coming on the show today. Well, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Okay. Tune in next time for Shrink Wrap Hawaii. Bye-bye. <laughs>